So how does the Holy Spirit work, guys? How does he work? Look, the best model we have is right here. It's right here. It's written down for a reason. It's in here. It's in here. You have to understand how he trains. You have to understand it. Um, whoever has ears, let him hear. That's the real you that he's talking about. That's the real you that hears. Not this. This is not you. This is you. The real you. That's why he spoke in parables. With clear and easy explanations, hearers can listen and achieve understanding and then go on their way. They just hear it and they're like, oh, you know, I heard that. Okay, I get it. And then just walk off. Right? Independent of the teacher. They just hear it and they're like, ah, you know, I don't need that. Man, it's okay. All right. But when a parable confounds you and it causes interest, it invites you to ask a question. It invites you to ask a question. So they continue to depend on the teacher himself. They start depending on him like, huh, I don't understand this. Hmm. Hmm. Not just their own, you know, independent understanding, not just what they understand. They want to, this is something deeper. I'm, I'm getting this understanding, but what, what do you want me to get? This is what I have. This is my understanding. But what's your understanding? What, what do you want me to get? I have this, but obviously this isn't what I'm supposed to have. So what is it that you want me to get? I have this understanding. I have this belief. Nicodemus, I understand this. I know this. I've been taught this. I've been trained in this. And Jesus says, bro, you're a master. You understand this? Well, I thought I understood. Obviously, you don't. So what do you need to do, Nicodemus, to learn from me? First of all, you need to humble out and learn from me. But he was going to him at night, which is even more interesting. Which means he was trying to get it in secret. This is very interesting because he knew that there was something that Jesus had that he wanted. And it was a mystery to him. So how is he to get it? And he tells him, you must be born again. You must be born again. You must be born again. Right? So. So if the parable has you confused. You have two options. Either get angry, upset, frustrated. Go off, walk off, ignore. That's one option. Or you humble out. You come to the Holy Spirit and ask him questions. And so what are you trying to show me? What's going on here? What's going on? If you guys know me, like, um, I'm always thinking about something. Because I know there's something deeper to everything. To everything. We get surface level stuff, man. You know, a lot of people live in a mind-made fiction. A lot of people live in a reality that's not even real. When I say not real, is it was made up of a bunch of things that don't even matter. And so when things do matter, we kind of just walk away from them because we don't think that they matter, but they really do. Right? So the parable, the parables have a have have a a, a powerful um, way of drawing you deeper in God. So. How can you hear the voice of God? You got to understand, man, that you can't just hear with this. You have to hear with this. And, you know, what's amazing, and a lot of people don't agree with this. Hey, man, you might not agree with what I'm going to say, and I don't care, to be honest. The only reason that the 12 didn't leave Jesus when he said, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood is because they knew they were being trained by him. They knew, they said, that's a heavy teaching. We can ask him later. Why? You have a relationship with him. And he'll tell us. He'll tell us. Which he did do. He did that. Passover. This is my blood. This is my body. And they understood. Because they had the patience to wait. And they didn't walk away. They didn't understand. But they waited. Sometimes there's some things we don't understand. But we got to be patient. We got to wait. And God will reveal it. He will reveal it. You just stay, hang in there, talk to the Holy Spirit, and he will reveal things to you. He will, okay? Um, so when you have a relationship with the teacher, with the teacher, come on, give us some thought. You have a relationship with the teacher. A lot of people don't have a relationship with the teacher. They just like to get things from the teacher, like power and gifts and laughter and, and dust and feathers. and They just want from the teacher. 
What about what the teacher wants from you? What about that one? What is he asking? What is the Holy Spirit asking of you? What is he asking of you? See, we've turned this thing into gimme, 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 but you already have everything. So now, what is he asking? He's only asking for what he's giving you. Everything. <laughs> right? So, are you willing to do it? That's the question. Are you willing to give everything? Seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. What's being added unto you? Remember, when he said that, it was old covenant. They weren't born again yet. But when they seeked out the kingdom of God and they were born again, they received the inheritance, which was everything. Everything that pertains to life and godliness. So, we have this thing that we call homework. And a lot of people don't agree with this, but really I don't care because I'm responsible for the people I teach. We'll go watch a movie and I'll tell people, watch the movie, but I want you to see and hear not what the director wants to give you. I want you to see what God is trying to say through that because the Bible says that God will take what the enemy used for evil and he'll use it for good, which means that you can find good. You can find good if you look for it. Look, if you're mining for dirt, you're only gonna find you're only gonna find dirt. But for those who are mining for gold, you don't pay attention to the dirt. Not that you're looking for it, but you don't pay attention to it. And we'll go watch these movies and I'll say, I want you to find the kingdom in that movie. Find it. Look for it. It's hidden. God's hidden in all things. He's hidden everywhere. If you're willing to look, you will find him. And you will find there, you'll sit through a movie and be like, what just happened? What just happened? I got a totally different narrative than what they were trying to give me. And I said, that's because that's the narrative of the world. And you're seeing now from a deeper level when you start to see things from the spirit. Because in the real world, hear me out, in the real world, the God of this world is presenting to you a narrative. And if you can see beneath the narrative of what the world is presenting to you, the parable that you see every day, and you can see beyond that, you can now see what it is that the Spirit is trying to reveal to you in all things. The Holy Spirit is going to reveal things to you in everything. If you can't see it in an hour movie, and you living in the world, look, I tell people, I know people who live in that movie. See that movie we just watched? I know people that live. That's their movie. That's their life right there. That's their whole life in one hour right there. That whole movie was their whole life in one hour. If you can't even find God's beauty and truth in what's going on there, you're going to look at people that are living in the world that are all messed up and you're not going to find how God's trying to reach them. You're not going to find ways to speak to them. You're not going to find the treasure that's hidden in them. Because believe it or not, God so loved the world. He loves the world. He loves people. And he wants to reach people. But the problem is that we see and hear on a surface level. And, and Jesus is like, we got to go deeper. We got to go deeper into that field. See that field right there? Go deep into that person. Why? Because we need to know what's going on with that person. Holy Spirit knows your heart. Holy Spirit knows what's going on. But he needs you to have a relationship so you can bring them into the mysteries, into the realities of God and bring them into a kingdom. And how do you do that? You do that by going up to them and having a relationship and telling them things about the kingdom of God. And you start speaking to them and showing them the beauty of God and what God wants for them. And then they get they get excited and they're like, tell me more. Of course. I'll tell you more. Tell me more about what God says. Tell me more about what he thinks of you. Tell me more about what he has for me. Tell me more about why he died for me. Tell me more why he didn't give up. Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. Oh, I have so much more to say. But are you willing to humble out? Are you willing to humble out and hear what God has to say? Are you humble enough to receive teachings? Are you humble enough to wash feet? Are you humble enough to serve? Are you humble enough? Are you humble enough? You have to be as a child to be the kingdom of God, which means that. You got to start all over again, man. You got to come into this thing with joy. You got to come into this thing with a different mindset. And the Holy Spirit is willing and able and wants to move through you. 
as we speak right now, as we're speaking right now, you can feel the Holy Spirit already tugging at you, saying, yes, yes, go deeper, go deeper. There's more to you than what you think. There's more to Jesus than what you thought. There's more to the story than what you read. There's more to this than what you'll ever understand. There's so much more. And yet, those mysteries were given to us to steward. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. We we're stewards of the mysteries of God. So how do you hear the Spirit of God? You have to listen from here. There's always two things that you got to listen to. Listen to what they're saying and listen to what they're really saying. Okay? And that's what you do. Like, okay, I hear what you're saying, but what's the root of that? Okay, I know why you're feeling that, but what's the root of that? See, he wants to uproot some things. Holy Spirit, want, he wants to uproot some things. Oh, that's, that's the root. Well, let's yank the root out and put a new seed in there. Let's yank it out. He was born again, not a corruptible seed, which has the root. What's the root of that fear? What's the root of that anger? Oh, that's the all man. Hey, but that got yanked out. That got yanked out. So really, you're just you're living in the flesh, and you're thinking carnally, and you're thinking in your own. But that root was yanked out. Yeah, that root's not there. Let's draw from the spirit now. So instead of going to the root of the issue, we now go to the fruit of the reality, which is love. on. Don't go to the root of the old man. Go to the fruit. Go to the fruit. Come on, man. Go to the fruit. You have the fruit of the Spirit that's already in you, which is the, the seed of Christ. And now the fruit gets to come out of you, man. But it won't come out of you if you don't understand the Holy Spirit's training you. Okay? The Holy Spirit's training you. What is the Holy Spirit saying about the mysteries in your life right now? Maybe you can't sleep. It's a mystery. How come I can't sleep? Talk to the one who knows all mysteries. Talk to the one who knows and understands all mysteries. Holy Spirit will tell you, this is what's going on. Hey, man, why, why do I have fear? Talk to the one who understands the mystery. And he'll tell you why you have fear and who address it. Get a relationship and humbling out and sitting. And I woke up at 5 o'clock this morning, man. I got on my knees. And I'm like, Lord, there's so much. There's so much that we're not touching on. There's so much that's on the inside. There's so much fire. You know, last night I was talking to one of my friends. And they're like, man, you're going to do a live tomorrow? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, man, you're doing a lot of lives. I'm like, man, this stuff has to come out. When you're full, it has to come out. It has to come out. It can't. I'm like this river, man. I'm like flowing because it has to come out. It's this reality, right? It's living water. Living water. It's it's even in that's a parable. Living water? Water that brings life? What? You'll never thirst again? What? What are you thirsting for? What are you thirsting for? You'll never thirst for that again. Like what? Because you'll be fulfilled. You won't thirst ever again, which means that you won't have need of anything. You will have everything you need. When you understand that you are a well, you have the bread, you have all these things already on the inside of you. The thing is, how do we tap into them? And we tap into them by being mentored and trained by the Holy Spirit. We have to be trained and mentored by the Holy Spirit. We have to talk to Holy Spirit. We have to have relationship with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit knows the beginning and the end. He knows the outcome. He knows everything that's going on. He's in all things. He's in all creation. He created everything. He creates peace. He creates joy because he is those things. So how much more us that carry the spirit of the living God now, we produce it because it's on the inside of us. Now hear me out. Just because you have peace doesn't mean it's automatically going to come out. Just because you, you are loved doesn't mean it's going to automatically come out. Just because you have the gifts and the fruit of the spirit doesn't mean it's automatically going to come out. You have to be taught through the Holy Spirit. To walk these things out. What you carry is holy. You have to be taught through the Holy Spirit how to carry 
and how to steward their mysteries. They're mysteries because no man can know these mysteries except the Holy Spirit. You train them taught through the Holy Spirit. And there are some that will never get it. And the Bible says that. The mystery's been hidden from them. It's been hidden from them. Which means that some will never get it because of flesh, carnality, pride, and all the things that will keep you from humbling out to God. You have to humble out to God. You have to break yourself. Straight up. Break yourself, man. Remember that saying in the 80s and 90s? Break yourself. Hey, break yourself, man. Break yourself. Break yourself. Smash that thing. Smash that vessel. Break yourself. Come on, humble out. Cry out to God. Be undignified. Man, do everything that it takes, man. Look, what happens when you recognize? I was telling my nephew this this morning. We're sitting here at the table. I said, what would it be like? Because he was asking me the other day, we're eating. He was talking about um, going to heaven and dying and, and going into uh, eternity. I said, hey, let's not mistake in the afterlife for eternal life. Let's not mistake in the two, okay? We're talking eternal life, not afterlife, okay? We're talking eternal life. You're talking about dying off and going off to heaven. I'm talking about eternal life right now. I said, eternal life right now is when you recognize that your best friend is a king. He's a king, man. And if your best friend is a king and he has the best counselor, which is Holy Spirit, and then you find out that this king is your father and him and the Holy Spirit are one, and now you get to walk out a reality, what what does that look like when you recognize that your father is a king and he has a kingdom and he has everything in his hand and you have an amazing relationship with this king and you love one another? What does that look like, man? Our job is to walk that out. The problem is we don't want to have a relationship with the king. We want to ask Peter, hey, Peter. When Jesus said, hey, one of you is going to betray me tonight. And John was laying on Jesus' chest. John was laying on Jesus' chest. John is the only one that survived. He was the longest one that lived the longest. He's the only one that wasn't martyred, didn't die by being martyred. John, he was still alive. He was on an island. He's the only one that did not die because he had a relationship with Jesus. And you recognize it. And that relationship didn't go away when Jesus died. He still had that relationship with him. And because of that, he was given the mysteries. And the mystery was, one of you is going to betray me. And John's like, because his ears on the heart of God. And Peter goes up to John and says, hey, John, ask Jesus who it is. John is like, ask him yourself. <laughs> ask him yourself. That's why people come up to me and they say, hey, Pete, what about this? What about that? 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 Ask him yourself. You have the Holy Spirit. Ask him yourself. Ask him yourself. Oh, the problem is you're not humble enough to put your ear on his chest because you're afraid that he won't receive you fully, but he will. Maybe you should lay with Jesus. Maybe you should cry to Jesus. Maybe you should pour your heart out to Jesus and tell him, I trust you. I believe you. I'll do everything you ask. I'll serve you with all my heart. I'll walk away from it all. And you know I will. Will you leave me too? Will you leave me too? Will you leave me too? Will you? Nemo, will you leave me too? Christy, will you leave me too? Will you leave me? Michael, will you leave me? This is what Jesus said. Will you leave me too? Are you going to leave me? You all going to leave me. You going to leave me. Where are we going to go? Jesus? You're the one that has the words to life. You are life. Where are we going to go? Jesus said, that's my point. Why would they ever leave? Why would they ever leave if they knew that? See, you know the mysteries. That's why you don't leave. Because you have a relationship with me. And you're patient. And you know there's more to this. And I'm training you to understand me now. Because ever, there's going to be more more conflict, more issues. Pentecost is coming and I will not be here to defend you, but I'm going to send another who's the Holy Spirit 
and I've already trained you for three years to listen to the way I teach, to listen to the way I trained you, to watch me, to live with me so you know if it's me or not. Man. We gotta up our game, teachers. We gotta up our game. You ask Jesus to show us the Father. Jesus said, Man, I've been with you this whole time and you're asking me to show you the Father? You really? You want me to show you the Father? Really? You want me to show you the Father? You want me to show him to you? This whole time? This whole time. You want me to show him to you? Really? Come on. You don't know. You don't know that what's inside of me is the Father. What's inside of me is everything. But you won't go deeper. You're just seeing this, but you won't go deeper. Go deeper. I'm trying to teach you to go deeper. It's not this. It's this. Go deeper. Man, that's Holy Spirit all day long. You thought it was that. Go deeper. You thought it was hurt. Go deeper. You thought it was, no, go deep. It's deeper. Go deeper. Go all the way in there. Who is it? It's me. I'm there. If you go deep enough, you'll find me up right there. Go deeper. And that's what it's all about. Holy Spirit's like, go deeper. You'll find out. You'll go to rock bottom. And when you go as deep as you can go, I'll be there. And when you've gone as far as you can go, I'll be there. The problem is you're not searching me out. And I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. You just got to find me. Knock, look, search. Don't quit. Go deeper. And that's what Jesus was all about. That's what Jesus was all about. Study his life, man. I know Christians that don't even know about Jesus. They didn't know his life, his story. They didn't even know what, I mean, I'm like, sweet Jesus, if this is the man we're supposed to model, how can you not know him? I know people that can't even stand five minutes in prayer with Holy Ghost. And you want to walk out eternity with him? Really? You want you to die and go to heaven and be there forever when you can't even sit down for five minutes? Come on, man. Work on your relationship and your fellowship, man. Not that it's a bad thing. You're just learning and growing. And I get it. It all takes time. But Jesus wept, man. Man, there's this parable where he cries after he says the parable. He actually cries because he, he knows you're not going to get it. He knows it. And he's like, man, some of you are just not going to get it. You're just not going to get it. He actually cries after the parable. He says that he started a week after he said the parable. He said it, man. And he just started crying. I don't even remember where it's at, to be honest. He started crying, man. And I was like, oh my gosh, Lord. Why are you crying, Jesus? Why are you crying? Why are you crying, Lord? Why are you crying? I ask him that when I'm reading. Why are you crying right here? Why, why are you mad right here? What's going on right here? you got to show me some stuff. Come on, Lord. What's going on? What's going on? He actually cries, man. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the heart of God right here. Right here. <sighs> Luke chapter 8, verse 4. And when what much people were gathered together and would come to him out of every city, he spoke by parables. A sower went out to sow the seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trotted down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon the rocks, and soon, as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprung up with it and choked it. And others fell on good ground and sprung up and bared fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said this, these things, he cried. Why did he cry? Why did he cry? Why? 
because he knew that there was going to be people that weren't going to hear what he was saying. And he knew he had the words of life. And he knew that he could save them. He knew he had everything they needed. And some of them just refused to accept it. They refused to hear him. And he cried because he knew you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle. And it won't be my fault. It'll be your fault because you will not humble out. You will not hear me. You will not take me on as a teacher. You will not submit to my words. And because of that, you are going to suffer. That's the gospel. That's the kingdom. That's why people are suffering. Right there. Right there. So, sorry if I'm getting a little emotional, but man, if your heart done hurt for people and you're in ministry, you need to get out. You need to get out. Straight up. Straight up. Because this is about people. This is about people, man. The people are hurting and struggling because they do not know the truth. And it's the truth that sets them free. And we carry the mysteries of that truth. How much more should we go out there and tell them the truth? It's not just about getting you into a place. It's about getting you into a kingdom where this king reigns. And you can walk out everlasting life, which is life now in the kingdom of God that has a king that loves you and provides for you everything that you need that pertains to life and godliness through the community and the children of God. That's what it's always been about. Always been about that. And don't misunderstand me. When we perish, when this body leaves and it fails, we will go into glory. But until then, we have work to do. Until then, we have to proclaim. Until then, we have to establish a reality here on earth that will allow people to receive all the things that God has for them because people are suffering, man. So, how can you hear the Spirit? How do you see the Spirit? I just gave you some tips, pointers. And um, study the life of Jesus, man. Just study it out. Study it. Study it. Be your master. Be your master. And I tell Holy Spirit this all the time. I tell Holy Spirit, mentor me. Mentor me. Because you know me, man. You know me, Holy Ghost. You know why I'm doing this. You know my heart. You know what I'm about. And you know how to talk to me. And you know how to train me. And I need you to help me. And all I have to do, all he says is, humble out. You don't know everything. Don't argue. Don't fight. Just listen. Submit. Have patience. Have love. Joy. Listen to me. Listen to me. So, I love you guys in the name of Jesus. Hopefully you guys uh, got something out of this. Share this with somebody. Guys, that's why we started Royal Family or National University because we're a family and we are a royal family. And we will honor each other and we will respect each other and we will war with each other and we will raise the name of Jesus up together. And that's what this is about. This is about a community and reality that allows a kingdom to flourish and flow. We create an ecosystem where the Holy Spirit reigns supreme with Christ and we work together in our lives to create a reality. Don't misunderstand. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is King. The Holy Spirit is teaching us to be everything that He is. So let's not confuse that, okay? We're being taught by the Holy Spirit that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is King. And we are learning to walk out kingship and sonship at the same time. So Jesus is Lord. So yeah. Kingdom unleashed, man. Kingdom unleashed. That's going to be the next conference. Kingdom unleashed. We're going to unleash the kingdom. Because it's needed. So guys, I love you guys in the name of Jesus. Jesus is a real star. I'm just this hype man. I'm just this hype man. Pray for me. Pray for our nation, guys. Pray for our 
to the believers across the world that aren't able to have church, go to church, or congregate, pray for them, man. Everybody's really tight. They're losing it. But know this, man. There's a mystery behind all this. So, I love you guys. www.royalfamilyinternational.com um, I have the School of Identity and Lifestyle. We have a class coming in January if you want to come. If you want to come get trained. If you want to just get, come to get loved on. If you just want to be around some people who live kingdom. If you just want to know what it looks like. If you just want to see what it feels, you know, if you just want to feel that people in the class, like they're like, this feels different. I'm like, yeah, because this is who you are. This is how it's supposed to feel. You're not trying to be better than everybody. You're not trying to sort You're not trying to prove that you're better and you know more. This is about how we treat each other. How we treat each other the way Jesus treated us, the way he treated humanity. Can we serve? So what does it feel like to be served? And you know me, man. If you've been around me, I serve. I serve. My whole life is to serve. So just a friend of friends. So guys, I love you guys in the name of Jesus. And you can go to www.royalfamilymedia.net. Um, man, I'm just, I'm just overwhelmed right now. I'm overwhelmed. So hopefully this helps you guys. Share this with somebody, guys. Share this with somebody. Um, so, uh, you, got, you guys can go to my YouTube channel too. I'm low, I load these up on there. So, guys, I love you guys in the name of Jesus. So, um, yeah. So, be blessed, guys. So, be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Hey, guys. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by. Please subscribe to my channel. If you liked it, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this content, about this video. And uh, please don't be afraid to share this. And if you like this, go ahead and hit that like button. Thumbs up, and uh, don't forget to turn your notifications on. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you for being a part of Royal Family International University. Don't forget to turn your notifications on.